anyone awake at 10 a.m.? No. How many were here yesterday? Yesterday was so much fun. I fell asleep the hardest I've ever slept in my entire life. So I'm still waking up as well. And now I'm full of breakfast. Did you actually get this? That was my <laughs> that was breakfast. <laughs> smartphone, anything phone-like that takes pictures, maybe a point-and-shoot camera, like a little Canon or something. Okay. For me, okay, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. First of all, I'm a, I'm a professional voice actor, is what I do for a living. Uh, this is my first time talking about photography in front of people, so I'm incredibly nervous, especially when people show up with cameras that look like that. Uh, so, <laughs> you'll have to forgive me as I stammer through. Uh, photography for me uh, is a lifelong passion. My father was a photographer, my sister's a photographer. It's something that's kind of in my blood. Uh, I see photography not so much as capturing pictures as capturing emotion. Uh, if I see something that's, it's an image that's really bright or happy, then that's what I want to capture. Be it light, person, thing, object, uh, you know, sometimes you see pictures that are thoughtful, sad, dark, whatever. This is about capturing cosplay. Cosplay. I mean, talk about characters and range of emotion. You have your characters that are dun -dun -dun -dun, superheroes. You have your ones that are kind of tragic. Ah, you have shutter speed, which is how long it's going to be open, and you have your aperture, which is how wide, <laughs> how wide, now I'm out of breath because I ran, uh, how wide the camera sensor opens. That's also going to help determine depth of field. Now, I'm not going to go into like psycho amounts of camera talk because, uh, well, I only have an hour, and I think... Uh, <laughs> That's something that I learned in a matter of years. So uh, I, that's something, you know, there's books on it, there's classes on it, there's a lot that you can learn about photography. But what I want to talk about is uh, how to capture the image and make something really cool with the least amount of equipment, right? So you have an iPhone or an Android or whatever it is that you have. And you want to capture something cool. Something that's a little bit cooler than, hey, you guys get together and let's just take a picture of y'all standing like this. You want that picture that makes your friends go, wow, the one that they share, you know, for all of their friends on Facebook, etc. So, you have your iPhone. The single most important thing in photography, get the image. Take the picture. You're never going to have that chance again. Don't worry about... When you see something cool, like yesterday, there was this guy that was, uh, I don't even know what he was dressed as, but he was like a wolf. He had lights. It was cool. And he was walking, and there was people around him, and I knew there was no way that I was going to be able to capture the image that I wanted. 
And so I'm trying to like get around this person, and do this, and it's not gonna happen. So finally I'm like, who cares? Get the image, right? Well now I can go in and I can crop and I can add contrast and maybe make it half the picture or do some interesting things that are, you know, make it make it a more interesting image. So first thing, capture the image. Whatever you do, take the picture. And then you can do some really cool stuff in your in your computer, in your phone, whatever. So and it's still in the morning and I'm like, where am I again? Australia. I was at a uh, I was at a baby shower and someone had brought their little girl. And I caught this image where this little girl is looking up. And behind her, over here, she's looking at her mom. There's all these things happening over here. And I see this image and I love this little girl. So when I when I took it into my computer, I just blacked out everything around her. And I just kept her. And to me, you know, it's a little girl now that's looking at anything. You can crop, like, don't be afraid to go in and say, I only want half a head. I only want half a person. I only want this or that. It's your image. And, and you want to be able to use photography to capture, like, Whatever it is you see in your brain, that's what's so great about it. I'm not going to judge your pictures. Y'all feel free to judge mine. <laughs> I judge them. I always see ways I'm like, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. That would have been so much better. Why didn't I do this? Yeah. And oh, the great thing about photography, you can keep changing a picture. It doesn't matter how many times. Like, change it. Do it. So. First and foremost, and that's just a picture that popped up. Okay. <laughs> I have a new dog. I'm kind of psycho about my dog right now. Uh, he's five months old. He's so cute. I love him. And uh, there was this moment where he was like licking my face. He's being cute. And I wanted to capture this image. So I take it with my phone, right? Me and the dog. Stupid. I take self-portraits all the time. And it was, it was a stupid picture. There was nothing interesting about it. It's me and a dog, like, making out. So <laughs> I take the same picture, put it into some iPhone apps, add some light, add some streaks of light, change the coloring, blur it up a little bit, crop it, and all of a sudden it's, I mean, y'all might be like, that's still weird, but, you know, suddenly it's about a dog, and it's a cute little moment. And it's no longer a weird chick that just took a picture making out with a dog. So. There's a lot that you can do. We're going to go through all these apps, by the way, and all these really cool little things that you can do to take pictures and make them cooler. I love light. I love light. I love light streaks. I love, I love the moments when the sun hits just right, where the, the beams actually streak down. Here's my dog running through the grass. This is a real light streak. That's the real sun beaming through the fence and everything. Here's another picture. There was no light streaming, but in an iPhone app, I went in and added the beams of light, added some, some light streaks through here, and now, yeah, you can tell it's probably fabricated, but in the same way, you can get light. I mean, this is what's cool about technology. Back in the days when we had to develop our own film, we couldn't do things like this in the blink of an eye. And so now, with these little apps that we can use on our computer, use on our phone, suddenly we can do these really cool things. So, before we go into it, what apps are you guys using right now? Anybody? Photo filter. Which one is it? Photo filter. Photo filter, good. Anybody else? Did you guys? Which one is it? You turn your head and she's like, look to your phone really fast. What are you using? Instagram. Instagram is awesome. Instagram's a really fun way to filter in different colors. Uh, if you take a picture, let me see if I have one. Oh, here's some Instagram pictures. Uh, this was another one I did with my dog. It's coming in remarkably blurry. Uh, Instagram's fun. 
Instagram is a really great way to, um, again, playing with light. Uh, this is the pool at my house in Dallas. Um, Instagram is a really fun way to share photos, show people your photos. When you when you take your photo and you put it in, in, into Instagram, there's actually different settings that it gives you. For instance, is everybody familiar with Instagram? Somewhat, ish. Okay, this is my Instagram page. Sometimes that thing comes up, and I'm like, ah, which is mine. Um. This was landing in Perth. So what's cool about Instagram, you go in, let's say we're gonna load in a photo. So you choose your photo, we'll choose this one. This is uh, my partner and my dog. So Instagram automatically lets you crop the photo. Do you wanna zoom in, do you wanna zoom out? Boom, crop your photo. And now you can go through and choose all <coughs> these different settings of how you want your photo to be. I love, you know, I love things that make it look kind of older and more interesting. I love texture in pictures. I love, uh, I love things in threes. I'm obsessed with the number three. So I like things. If you t if you look at any photo and you put a grid on it, and you put three lines across the photo, three lines down. I love the interesting subject of the photo to hit at a cross intersection of the grid. So, a corner photo, like here. You put the lines down, dog crosses, face crosses. I love things to cross at intersections, personally. But, photography, there is no right or wrong. You can do anything that you want to do. Now, before I end up loading that onto my Instagram. So Instagram is a really cool way to share photos and, and change your photos. I'm going to tell you guys about my personal favorite. It's called Snapseed. If you guys haven't used this yet, I can't rave on it enough. This one is so much fun to take a picture. to a, um, a wildlife park and take pictures of wild tigers. Really, really, really fun photo shoot I got to do. So you have your picture. What I like to do is use tune image. It allows you to have the brightness. You've got your ambience, which ambience just basically it brightens the picture while adding a slight amount of color in it as well. You have your contrast. Be careful with contrast, it can be a lot of fun to do artsy pictures. You can see how, after a while, it's just nothing about it's realistic. So, contrast is what to be careful with. Saturation, change your white balance, apply. Now, you can go in, you can crop an image, you can straighten an image. They have a really fun little feature on here called Drama, where you can take it in. And it adds a lot of contrast. It also adds texture to the photo if you like uh, a lot of noise in your picture. It's an interesting thing to do. Um, this one's also fun because you can choose a focal point that you want to make sure stays in focus. And then you, you can blur out the rest of the photo as much as you want. That's fun to do. Uh, they have a new thing on here. Retrolux, which actually takes it back to like looking like kind of an old tiny picture, which is fun. So that's one I really love, Snapseed, Snapseed. I think it's like 99 cents or something in the app store. And just play with it, because it has so many interesting things that you can do with a picture, it's ridiculous. Um, if you want to take it really, really artsy, the like grunge, you know, whatever it is you want to do, that's a great app that I recommend. And even if you're shooting with a DSLR, you I use Lightroom. Who had the digital SLRs? Do you use what what editing software do you use? Photoshop. Photoshop. That's oh, that's nice. You you might like that one. Um, there's a lot that you can. Uh, I use Lightroom, Photoshop, Lightroom because for most of my pictures, I'm just wanting to add a little like 
brightness here or there. I find that some of these um, apps do really, 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 really cool things really fast. So I've even been known to take my Nikon pictures, Nikon as I found out you guys call it. Uh, I'll take my Nikon pictures and actually put them into the apps and use them that way. Just because, I mean, they're fun. This is, okay, uh, this one is called Photo Wizard. I probably use this the most for these two simple features. So, you bring in your photo, whatever it is. Bring it to this one. Oh, I'll show you. I'll show that one later. So, all right, this is a good friend of mine. This is Andy. Andy and I were out having a glass of wine one night. So, snap this picture. Now, you have your filters just like on all of the others. You can adjust brightness, you can adjust uh, saturation, you can do those things. This one's cool, it's got these auto features, auto white balance, great feature. Uh, it's got auto color, auto contrast, auto, and it's actually, I, for me, I found of all the apps, this one does the best at getting it right. Um, you know, you have, if there's a lot of noise in your photo, noise is the thing that happens when you take a photo in low light and you have your, uh, you have to up the ISO a lot to get the photo bright enough. There's this kind of a grain, it looks real grainy. Um, it can actually be a really cool element to have in a photograph, so play with it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with noise. But if it's a picture, like you're, you're wanting to capture somebody's face and you want it to look as like clean as possible, this is a great little element, reduce noise. And it basically just kind of, uh, I don't want to say blurs it, but it puts, puts just a very thin blur filter over it just to get rid of some of that grainy look. This one, uh, do you guys know the histogram? I know y'all all working with the histogram. A histogram shows you the light and dark of a photo, so you can actually, uh, that's one to play with if you want to. These spikes right here, an especially dark photo is over here, an especially bright photo, you're gonna see the spikes on this edge. This just shows you the shadows and light throughout a photo, and you can manipulate that. If you wanna add, say, a little bit of light in there, then you can add, you can adjust that uh, histogram. To, that, to do that. And then sometimes it's a little more equalized than just going in and brightening up a photo. It can be better. Now, what I love about this app is this button right here, the effects. They're ridiculous and they're so much fun. Especially, especially when you're doing it for um, like smartphone photos, you can do really fun stuff. So you can change the colors, you know, add a little bit of purple, Maybe a little more green, you know, play around with these different things. I love this one, the light leak. This one, if you if you want to just add something kind of interesting to a photo, add light. Because light is always something that just, it'll change photos in a really good way. So, well, suddenly you have, obviously that's way too much light. adjust the amount of the light that you want so it's not quite so pronounced, but suddenly, you know, it just adds little interesting elements to a photo. Make it a little bit brighter, make the background not quite so obvious, whatever you want to do. Another one that's really fun, uh, bouquet is something used in photography. It's an effect that happens when you use a really long lens, such as what you have, and you're, and I know you know this, and you're taking a photo of an object, say I'm trying to take a picture of you, and you have these really cool lights behind you. Let's just say there's a lot of light, uh, lamps, what have you, behind you. There's an effect that you can do with a long range lens, and you don't even need one that long, where you zoom in on a picture, and what happens is, is those, those lights behind him turn into these little spheres. Have you ever seen that in a picture? And it's these really pretty little circles behind somebody, that's called bouquet. It's kind of hard to do with a photo. So this app is really cool because you can go in and add bouquet, just like that. Now, obviously that's gonna be weird because that's over his face. This is a terrible example. Uh, sorry. <laughs> if you have something that you have a picture
dress. Obviously, I'm not going to put bouquet over his face. Um, but let's say you have a cool landscape. You just take, you've gone out and you've taken a picture of the river, and it's this really cool river at sunset, and you know you've got that sun in there just right. If you add these little uh, spheres in there, this little bit of bouquet, that's kind of a cool effect, you know? And people will think it's real, because they did a really good job with this app. So suddenly, your photos don't look like iPhone photos anymore. Everybody's like, what camera are you using? I love to do that. I love to take an iPhone photo and do really, really, really cool stuff to it. And everybody's like, man, you and that Nikon. And I'm like, <laughs> iPhone. I don't know. It makes me feel cool. Uh, so yeah, there's gray presets if you want to play with those. There's, I mean, there's, there's like crazy stuff that you can do with this one. You want to turn it into newsprint? I mean, you can really get like really creative with these apps. So those two apps, for me, are the ones I use the most. Um, I mean, it, it's crazy. It goes on and on. Add noise. This one's fun. That's noise, by the way. That grainy. That's what happens when you shoot in low light. Um, if you don't have the proper ISO and you have to up the exposure, you get that kind of grainy look in there, which can be really cool on some photos if you want it. It's a good effect to have. So, the great thing about photography is it's endless. You can literally do anything you want. Um, I'll show you a couple of nuts. Uh, I was in Sonoma, California, and I was at a vineyard and I'm taking pictures and somebody says, he's about to propose. And I turn around and there's a couple and he is literally, you know, is holding her, holding her face and he's giving the speech of, how, you know, I love you, we're meant to spend our lives together and, and uh, you know, this is like a photographer's dream, you know, little moments like this and I'm like sprinting. <laughs> you know, like a psycho on their special moment. And uh, this is one of those that I'm like, when I say capture the image, just get the image, who cares? This is what I mean. I would give anything if I could have said, hey guys, I know you're having your moment. Could you shift this way so that I don't have that obnoxious tree in the background? Um, I don't think they would have taken to that <laughs> very kindly. But um, still, even with the obnoxious tree in the background, it's a moment captured. He's telling her how much he loves her. Fortunately, when she said yes, they shifted somehow. So I was able to move around on the other edge and capture this as she's saying yes to him. He's actually still holding the box. So he's just said, will you marry me? And she leans forward and says yes. So the most important thing you can do, get the picture. It's a moment that's never gonna happen again. Then you can take it and you can add Brightness. In this photo, it was, it was, I had already exposed the camera to the background because that's what I was taking pictures of. So their faces were completely dark. Now the background was beautiful, but their faces were dark. So by the time I brightened the picture to get their faces bright enough, I lost the background. But who cares? This is their proposal, right? So sometimes it's just about getting what's important in a photo, making it the focal point, don't worry about anything else, and when the photo looks weird, make it black and white. I don't know why that makes everything better, but it does. <laughs> this was actually not that great of a photo until it became black and white. Another one, uh, I'm taking pictures of wild uh, tigers, and there's this angry tiger that's sitting, or lion, I don't know the difference, uh, that's sitting in his box that they had made for him, cave thing, and it was so dark, it was so dark, and I thought there's no way I can get this picture. So I go in, I snap the picture, because again, just get the picture, play with it later, it doesn't matter. This is actually one of my favorite pictures I've ever taken, it's blown up in my house, and I ended up with this, because it was so dark when I took it. And by the time I was able to, in post, I took it in, in post is uh, after the fact. You've taken your picture, you take it in, you do cool things to it. I went in and by the time I brightened it, 
I did the same thing. I like I like half bases. I like that's kind of my thing. So then you darken the rest, and you know I went in and brightened his eyes specifically because I wanted them to really shine. So you can take a horrible moment that you think you'll never ever ever get the picture. Take it and do something with it. Uh, if it's blurry, like you've, we've all done this, where we take the picture and all of a sudden we look and we're like, ah, I got one. Uh, I got one on the street yesterday. There's a guy and he has this uh, Australian flag and he's running down the street like he's a superhero. Uh, I caught the image and the flag is completely blurry and I'm gonna do something with it. You know, I'll change the color. I'll crop weird. I'll do something and make it artistic. So that more than anything, you know. Play with light. This was, uh, that's my dog, and this is where I live. And uh, there was a parade going on downtown, and he wasn't allowed outside yet because he hadn't had his vaccinations. And so he's sitting there very sad because he can hear everybody outside doing something fun and he can't go do it. And I just loved it because the sun was coming through. And here's my poor little sad dog. And you know, it's, it's not about you know, perfect images. I see photographers all the time, and I see their images, and I'm like, that is perfect. Like, that is, that's amazing. And then sometimes I see, like, snapshots out of an iPhone, and I'm like, that's amazing, that's perfect. So there is, in photography, there's no right or wrong. And I think maybe that's what I love so much about it, is that um, something I think is beautiful, y'all may think is, like, weird. And that's okay. Um, if you think about it, it's a lot like anime. Sometimes I think anime is weird. Sometimes I think it's awesome. Uh, friends, if you're if you have your friends that are in a really cool cosplay, and you're wanting to capture an image, find a cool backdrop. You know, Perth. You, I, this is like a photographer's dream. I've seen more. It just even right in this area, there are some of the most interesting windows, uh, uh, columns. Um, reflective columns, there's, uh, you know, even if you're indoors and you're just trying to capture the image, instead of just saying, hey, pose, click, I'm going to capture that image, make them stand next to a wall. And you go stand next to the wall. That's a really cool photographer's trick. If you go and you stand up against a wall and you take the picture with them also, you get a little bit of that wall in there, that adds such a cool perspective. It's almost like the picture's pointing at them. It's a really cool thing. Try it out. Um, angles. Sometimes in cosplay, it's like you just want to get um, uh, Jessie Pridemore is a, is a cosplayer in the States, and she's also a photographer. She caught an image of a mermaid the other day, but it was somebody who was cosplaying as a mermaid and actually got in the pool and started swimming around. And all the other photographers were taking pictures of the whole mermaid. And Jessie got in there, got water level. She actually laid on her stomach and got water level and just caught the girl looking back and it was this very close crop of the girl's face and you knew exactly what it was. I looked at it and knew that fast it was a mermaid. I didn't need to see the tail, I didn't need to see anything else. It, and she actually got the little drops of water coming off the eyelashes. Like it was so beautiful. So it's not even like, if you see it and it's like, that's amazing. We'll get it because you're going to show your friends an amazing cosplay. Or make a move. I mean, we all love having our pictures taken, right? So, especially if we're dressed up. <laughs> Somebody's like, no. Uh, <laughs> but if you go through all the trouble to create this amazing, amazing cosplay, it's kind of cool when people want to take pictures of it. You know? So nobody's going to be like, I'm absolutely not going to do anything cool for you. Nobody's going to do that to you. They're going to, you know, absolutely. You want me to move over here? You want me to, uh, uh, you know, especially, you know, take them outside. I think it's always fun to get cosplayers outside of their element. Let's see. Here. This was in North Carolina. Um, she looked amazing. I mean, what a really cool, weird cosplay, right? And she was actually walking down the street, and, um, and I caught her and I said, oh, move over here, do this, do this, do this. And because of how bright it was that day, it was like the sunniest day ever, it was going to be a hard picture to capture. And I wanted to make sure that I got her as much as possible. And then because she's, I mean, what a harsh image. She's like a cat holding a sword. 
Um, so I wanted a lot of contrast and make it a real kind of jarring photo because I felt like her cosplay was very jarring. But also, who sees that walking down a regular street next to an apartment building? You know, it's kind of a weird thing. So have fun with it. Take people and uh, here's one. Here's another one. I mean, it's so weird <laughs> to see. You're not going to see that walking down the street. So, I mean, you know, take people outside. Uh, oh, uh, cosplayers eating. I don't know why I find that so cool. Like a group of people, like, get, get your friends that are all in their really cool cosplay and set them down at a table and get images of them like all just sitting there eating in this very normal setting, yet everybody's dressed up, you know, it's like, oh cool, Sailor Moon and Videl, <laughs> eating burgers. Um, you know, it just makes it a more interesting photo than just capturing them in the hallway. Uh, another, let's see here, ooh, candid pictures. I love people not realizing they're getting their picture taken. That's so much fun to me. This was, again, at the convention in North Carolina, and I'm walking by, and she just looks so sad. Like, it was just, like, and, and in the scene, there's all these other people. It's like, this, the convention's just started. Everybody's dressed up. We're about to have so much fun. And she's just sitting there with her guitar, you know? And I thought, eh. and in the end, I just think it's a really interesting image. Um, this is a girl named Shelby Allison. She's a voice actor. She's an up-and-coming voice actor. She's in a uh, K-On! and a couple other shows. And uh, she had no idea I was about to take this picture. I looked down and um, we're sitting in a coffee shop and she's just staring out the window. And, you know, again, really cool image. I think it's weirder that whatever that in the corner is, that fascinated me more than anything. Um, adding little focal elements are cool, but yet you still can see her. Uh, here's another interesting cosplay. Something about, I do love black and white when it's really interesting. Um, uh, light. Something else that's fun to play with. There was a lot of other people standing around. I went in and darkened them all out and took them out of the picture just to leave the two people staring into the fire. And just using the ambient light and no flash. She looks so angry. She actually wasn't. Um, yeah. So there's some... A few photos are there you haven't shown that would be... Oh, this is Bouquet, by the way. That's just Bouquet. It's a really cool effect that makes pictures look so incredible when you, uh, when you do that. Angles are fun. If you see people standing around, you know, don't be afraid to lay on your stomach. Don't be afraid to sit on the ground and shoot up. Don't be afraid to run up the stairs and shoot down at people. Those are always interesting elements. So, okay, questions. Anyone have any questions? Anything we haven't covered or? What was the name of that um, app that you showed that you can add the book Uh That one is called Photo Wizard. I'll show you what it looks like again. Photo Wizard here, it's uh, this one right here is what the icon looks like. And that, um, that specific, once you've added your photo, <coughs> Actually go, you can make this one make more sense. You can go in and like lessen the amount so that it's just this subtle. You can take the color so that the colors stay the same. So there's a lot that you can go in and play with. I like it to be really subtle in the background. So that you just you just get like the tiniest, and it's hard to see up there, but you just get the tiniest little essence of it. Unless sometimes it looks really cool to leave it like big time okay. Um, but that one, and then the light, light leak, and I like this classic effect. There's something really cool to me about, you know, changing the color of a picture. 
and you know, I, I love that Apple has created these amazing things, or I know Apple didn't do this. Whoever created these apps that allow you to go in and really manipulate images, um, it, it makes it so much more fun to capture things, because you can go in and create art instead of just, look at this thing that somebody else created that's really cool, now you can create something that's just as cool to showcase off their art. So I love the apps. Anyone else? Nobody? <laughs> Besides these. Which, which one? Like Flickr music. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I do like Flickr quite a bit. I, I have a Flickr page on. Oh, you know what? I'm not connected to the internet, so I'll pop them up. Um, I do have a Flickr page uh, that I'll display a few pictures on. If you go to my voiceover website, I have a link to my uh, Flickr page on there. I love uh, Instagram. I'm on Instagram every day. That's one. I love posting pictures on Instagram. Um, uh, Facebook. Facebook is a really fun one to share pictures on. Uh, Camera Plus is a good one. I don't, I'm not on that one as much. I know a lot of people that like that, but I'm not on that one as much. Probably Instagram, Facebook. Occasionally I'll post pictures on Twitter. Uh, Flickr's great for pro photography. If there's something that you want to learn, I'm telling you go to Flickr. There's going to be a lesson on how to do it. Uh, there's groups on there. If you have a thing for, I like to capture wild animal, animals. There's going to be like, you can get so specific. It's like, I like, you know, King Charles Cavaliers. And there will be a page that you can go and see how other people took pictures of their dogs. Um, I'm creepy obsessed with taking pictures of my dog right now. It's gross. Uh, so yeah, the Flickr has the biggest um, groups. You can join groups. You can meet other photographers or other people that like doing things. You know, I like to play with light. Uh, I also shoot with a Nikon D7000. I joined several of those groups. And uh, it's a great way to learn more about your camera. There's also a lot of books out there. I, I read one on my 22 hour flight here <laughs> uh, about my camera. And Absolutely. can I answer? No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, it's um, <laughs> can I answer as a character? Uh, <laughs> if they call back, I'm going to. Um, yeah, there's books. I read a book specifically on the Nikon D7000 and had changed all my camera settings by the time I landed in Australia. And now I have no idea how to use my own camera. <laughs> um, so there is, it will backfire. Um, but now all of a sudden my camera, like I, it's like opened up this world uh, that I love. When you shoot, also when you shoot with um, pro cameras, uh, and I've seen, what's really cool about the DSLRs versus SLRs is Back in the day when I started shooting pictures, people with SLR, this is a, this, these bigger cameras, SLR cameras, were pro photographers. Um, everybody else had, you know, little point and shoot cameras. Well, now they've actually made these so affordable now that we're getting digital, uh, affordable being a relative term. Um, but you don't have to be a pro photographer to go and buy one now. And um, people ask me all the time when it comes to DSLRs, which one I recommend. I don't want to offend any pro photographers in the room because <laughs> I know everybody has a different, a different thing. I recommend if, if you're not trying to get into pro photography and you're just looking for a, a camera that's a little bit more substantial than your phone, um, that's going to be a fun camera to shoot with, I recommend the Nikon D40. It's an old camera. It doesn't take video. Uh, it doesn't do some of the things that the newer cameras do. However, it's cheap. I think you, in the States, you can get them for like $350, $400. Uh, it's a fantastic camera. A lot of cameras that have come out since the D40 are actually not even as good as the D40. It's fast. Uh, you can set it to take a lot of pictures in a short amount of time. Um, and it does, it does a great job. You know, I always say, because a, a lot of the point and shoots nowadays, if you're going to spend $300 on one, why not get one that you can really, you know, go out and take more professional looking pictures with. So that's the one that I recommend. But Canon users probably hate me. <laughs> no? Okay, good. Sometimes people get really, oh, people, it's like PC versus Mac. People get really angry about, you shoot Nikon on Canon. I'm sorry. Um, it's just, what is what I bought? But my first ever camera was a Nikon D40. Such a good camera. Uh, this one is the Nikon D7000. 
Uh, the best Nikon you can buy right now is the D800. The best Canon you can buy right now is the uh, 5D Mark III. <laughs> this setup he has, he walked in two days ago and I seriously almost just started crying. I want that setup so bad. Um, what, what he's able to do with this, with this particular camera that he has is um, he can, ISO is the sensor sensitivity. Uh, the higher your ISO, the more light is gonna get into the camera. Uh, so in these low light situations, you go to a higher ISO to be able to capture what you wanna capture. If I take my camera to ISO 6400, I'm gonna get that grainy look that I was showing you, it's called noise. If he takes his camera to ISO 6400 or higher, um, he's not going to get that, especially with that lens. God, it hurts. Um, <laughs> although this is my 1.8, it's prime. Beautiful. Um, I got to use a. There's uh, Clem let me use his um, his lens yesterday, and it's a lens I want really, really bad. I'm just trying to figure out how to get out of here. I mean, really, y'all won't see me again for a long time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Lenses get expensive. If uh, Here's a little pro photography tip. If, when you get your DSLR, if you decide to get one, don't put as much money into the actual camera as you do the lenses because your amazing photos come more from the lens than they do the camera. I can take... Well, that's Canon, but I can take a Nikon lens on a more expensive camera and put it on this one and take amazing images. We would probably take the exact same images. The camera really doesn't matter. Uh, the different features that you get with DSLRs, the D7000 that I have here has a more video capability, which is why I bought it. I'm currently obsessed with HD video. Uh, so I like to shoot, that means I'm about out of time. Um, I like to shoot a uh, video with it, and this does a really good job with video. Uh, editing video, if y'all have a Mac computer, it comes with iMovie. It's so intuitive, it's so easy to use, I love it. So, any other questions before I get kicked out? Mm -hmm. Oh, I do? Yeah. You always represent the end. I came to watch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's over, people, it's over. Yeah, you said that you mentioned lenses. Can you show us examples of the same shots with different lenses? Or can you explain why the lens is so important? Let me think. The answer is yes. Um, okay, yep. Give me two seconds. Let me hear. Uh, let me see if I have on here. You can also go online and see different things. Uh, the, the big thing about a lens is your f-stop, which is uh, its aperture, and that determines your depth of field. It's, if you look at the basic mechanics of a camera, you have your digital sensor, which determines sensitivity to light, and then you have your shutter. And the shutter is opening up and capturing the image. Uh, your shutter speed determines how long it stays open. So you hear people say, well, you know, it's really, really dark, and I want to get a shot of the moon. So you put it on a tripod and you open up that shutter for like three or four seconds and that's how it allows enough light into the camera to capture the image. Uh, in really bright light if you're capturing sports, you want it to be, a, I mean it is like, you know, one two thousandth of a second. I mean you're just like, <laughs> you can't even see it with the human eye. And that's how it captures that perfect still image. Your aperture determines how wide that shutter opens. So is it opening wider? Is it opening less? It's been so long since I've taken a photography class that I'm trying to remember which it is. Do you remember? Less is more. Less is more. Okay, so <laughs> the higher the number, the less it opens. Yeah, uh, what, it, what it determines you, you know that little thing on your camera if you have an SLR and it says F whatever, F11, F1.8? The, the numbers, the smaller the number, the shallower the depth of field. Now, depth of field means if I take a picture of an object, I have an example. <laughs> Where is it? And you guys are gonna have to forgive because I actually screen captured this off of Instagram. So it's an awful quality, I'm so sorry. Um, ah, it's so bad, you can't see it up here. I can show you on, uh, whatever, I'll show you in a second. Um, this is in focus. This is a picture of a glass of whiskey, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's, 
this is in focus. Everything back here is blurred. That's a shallow depth of field. That was shot with an f1.8. So what that means is that that is smaller that number, the shallower that space is, that the object you're shooting is going to be in focus. Uh, yesterday I had uh, lunch with my mom and Kyle Hebert. And I had on a lens that only went down to an f-stop of 3.5. And I was showing them, like, oh, look, if I take this picture, you're in focus and the restaurant's in focus. Then I switched to, this one is a 1.8 prime, 35 millimeter. Uh, the millimeters is how far you can zoom in and out. So 35 millimeter prime means I can't zoom. Um, I can't focus in on your face and then pull it back out. It is what it is. Uh, the 1.8, I then took the exact same picture. And I can pass this around if anybody wants. Cool. It's going to be a lot of pictures of Kyle. <laughs> um, okay. And I'll, I'll come show you first and then I'll show you down real quick. So this is Kyle, the wide depth of field. See so how the restaurant is in focus? Everything's in focus around him. Suddenly, everything back here is a blur. But because it's 35 millimeter, I wasn't able to pull it back out. So I'll show this row. This is Kyle. <laughs> and see how the restaurant's in focus? Now it's blurred. So that's what the depth of field means. Kyle with restaurant in focus. Everything in focus? Everything blurry. And that's what depth of field is. When the things that are in focus, and everything behind it is blurred. And blurry. And that's how the different lenses, and the reason why lenses are so much more expensive. Um, I hope you don't mind what I'm about to do here. Uh, <laughs> This lens in the States, this 35 millimeter prime lens, is $350. Uh, this lens in the States, what was it, about $3,000? $2,500? Yeah. Big difference in price. <laughs> but they do, these two lenses will do the exact same thing as far as depth of field. The difference is he can stand right there and take a close up photo of your face. I can stand right here and get all of you. <laughs> and that's all I'm able to do. That's why there's such an enormous price difference uh, between lenses. Uh, kit lenses that these cameras come with have actually gotten really good. Uh, they used to be, when you got a, a lens that came with your camera, it was not good glass. Um, the one that came with it, that's not the one that came with my camera, but the one that actually did come with my camera, I use all the time. Um, the millimeters, when you look at a lens and it says it's a 18 to 135 millimeter, that means 18 millimeter is going to be a wider angle, means I can take a picture of the entire room, whereas 135 means I'm now zooming in on somebody. Uh, when you have one of the more expensive lenses that has an f-stop of 2.8, you can capture more light. The camera allows more light, so I'm going to get a better picture with a lens like that than I am with. Do you have to do dark rooms? Like, in particular? I was going to say, you mean a John? Um, <laughs> you're in a dark camera room. Um, <laughs> I love him, by the way. I just oh met him. Uh, he is one of the funniest people I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, I never did get to do dark room stuff. Uh, I, I'm so much older than all of you, and yet I'm not old enough to have really been around during those times. Um, my sister, my sister did. My sister became fascinated with uh, developing her own film, and um, gosh, she did that for like a couple of years. And she was creating these really cool images where she would put them on film, take them in the dark room, and do all that. Um, it's just not practical. I mean, it's great for art. If you want to have a gallery showing, absolutely, you can do beautiful things when you develop your own film. But if you want to do anything that involves being a photographer, 
Let me tell you, when people pay you, they want their pictures now. And it doesn't even work like that. Even editing on a computer can take so long. It depends on how much effort you want to put into it. Um, I did. The, I was I was hired to do the wildcat shoot, and I think it was a year ago. I'm still editing images. <laughs> Granted, I think I took almost a thousand. You know, because I, I was given access that nobody had given access been given access to before, which was to actually get up to wild cats. Um, so I went berserk. I had multiple cameras. I was like, you know, I lost my mind. Um, even editing in a in a computer can take a really long time. So I think darkroom editing now is just, I hate it, it's beautiful, um, but I just think it's a lost art. Except for the people that are going, I will do this and it will be amazing, and I will have a gallery showing and be famous. And maybe that can happen, probably not. <laughs> uh, I saw um, Dolly, Salvador Dolly, as a famous artist, he did the melting clock picture. And I happened to be at his museum at the same time that they had a showing um, of a photographer that had followed Dolly around and taken images of Dolly and his wife, Gala. And they had a very tragic marriage, it's a fascinating story. Uh, and those had all been developed on film and it was just so beautiful to walk through and see what they had done. It's such a lost art and it's sad, but at the same time it's cool that we can do this. It's cool that you can take a picture with your phone and then edit it and put it online and people actually see it. Nobody saw pictures before. The only time you saw someone's pictures is when you went to their house and they went, here, go through this. Or they showed you slideshows. Are y'all old enough to remember those? <laughs> oh, I, be grateful. Going to your grandparents' house and having to watch five hours of slideshows was like the worst thing ever. <laughs> it's so much better on Facebook when you can go, that's cool, that's cool, and I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to go through your whole album. Uh, it's much better. Is Dolly the dude with the funny mustache? Yes. Salvador Dolly. If y'all don't know his work, look him up. He's fascinating. Tragic and weird and cool. Um, yeah. But, but there's a lot of... Uh, I saw this really interesting photo exhibit once of a photographer from the 1970s. Ooh, so long ago. Um, and <laughs> And then uh, we were there for John's comedy show last night when he was like, who here was born in the 60s? And it's like, <laughs> um, who's here in the 90s? <laughs> um, <laughs> so God, we, we all went backstage. Um, uh, anyway, so he was, was a 70s photographer, and he was doing street photography, which nowadays is kind of what we all do, I think, in a way. Um, and it was so cool because like the things he was doing, people were so fascinated by. Ooh, a car is driving by and he took a picture with their window rolled down and they looked at the camera and this was like revolutionary. You know, uh, three women walking on a corner and they're like, you know, whoa. So <laughs> now that anybody can be, a, anybody quite frankly can be a photographer. Only certain people will ever make money as a photographer. <laughs> um, but anybody has the ability to create art with a camera. And it's your your thing. I mean, it's literally endless. They're, they're, people will tell you, they're, I took uh, lessons with a guy named Robert Rostick. I, I studied with him for two years. Uh, he, there's rules. The rule of thirds, there's the rule of light, there's the rule of, and it's like, stop, there's not. <laughs> there's really not. It's your vision. It's your memory that you're capturing. So there is absolutely no right or wrong, which to me is what makes it so fun. Um, voiceover is my love. It's how I pay my bills. Photography is my therapy. Um, I actually use it to walk away from the world and see things from a different perspective. And suddenly, things that really aren't terribly interesting become fascinating in my eyes. Uh, I think I should, I'm, I'm taking guitar lessons, and my guitar instructor says to me, he hands me a piece of paper with things I still don't understand because I'm really bad at guitar. Um, and he says, here, the history of rock and roll is on this piece of paper. What? And I, it's, 
I don't even understand it. Somehow this represents that, and this is, you put your fingers here, I don't get it. Um, and I've been doing it for a year and a half, so I don't know why it's not sinking in. Um, and, I, and I'm a perfectionist. I've never struggled this hard in my life. Um, but when he handed me this piece of paper and he said, here's the history of rock and roll. Everything that has to do, all of Elvis, all of the Beatles, all of the most, the history of rock and roll are in these chords. And, and I thought, well, that's kind of cool. And so this was taken with my iPhone. I grabbed my guitar, I threw the piece of paper on it, and I took a picture of it. Because I wanted to remember that at one point in my life, somebody gave me the roadmap to rock and roll. Didn't mean I found my way there. <laughs> um, so for me, it's all about, I'm trying to see if there's any other uh, I think I got them all. Uh, this one, Death the Field, we were talking about. Uh, a lizard that looks the exact same color as the rocks. Let me tell you how hard that is to capture. Uh, I use it with depth of field. Just capture the, make sure he's in focus, get everything back here blurred out. Suddenly he stands out a little bit. Doesn't mean anybody else is gonna fall in love with the picture, but I sure did. Uh, interesting little moments between couples. I love things like this. I love people not realizing they're being photographed. There's something, when people know a camera's there, they automatically kinda go, I do. I mean, I'm like talking to people during panels, and I'm like, well, the thing is, is when I started voicing Goten, <laughs> you can't help it. So I love when people have no idea they're being photographed. You can get some really cool images. Uh, this couple just got engaged uh, about four months after this, and are getting married. And this is their favorite picture. So, and I happen to be drinking a lot of wine and sitting far away, and I have a zoom lens, and I see them, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle any of them even turned out. That's funny. Watch how suddenly you start going, the more you sit at a vineyard. Uh, <laughs> I was in San Francisco, and I realized I looked outside of my hotel room window, and I realized that I could see the Golden Gate Bridge far, far away. And there was no way I was going to be able to really capture this image. So this was an iPhone photo. I didn't have my Nikon with me. And you, with your iPhone, you can zoom. So I zoomed as far as I could go. And then it was so grainy and gross, I changed the color. I just went in on an iPhone app and shifted things around. And all of a sudden, far, far away, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge. So there's a million, you know, I wish I had captured more, uh, more pictures. This was one of the Wildcats. These were so hard. I had such a hard time capturing these. The day I was there, uh, they're in enclosed spaces, number one, and it was raining, so it was just dark. Everything was dark, and I, don't, I didn't have his camera. Um, so I was very nervous about how am I going to get enough light into these pictures. And, um, you weren't nervous about big cats? Huh? You weren't nervous about big cats? There was a, there was a very thin uh, mesh fence between us, and, which also made it hard. I had to shoot through the mesh. So all of my images blown up, there was actually like here and up there, you could see the metal mesh. And I had to go ahead and crop the image past the mesh on each picture. Uh, somewhere, oh, I have to take me too long. Uh, somebody actually got pictures of me taking the pictures and the cats were fascinated with my camera because it makes a subtle focusing sound when I'm focusing in and out. Oh, you can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> <Mike>. <laughs> hear it? Um, the cats were hearing it because they're very sensitive. So the cats would actually hear that focusing, and all of a sudden you would see these cats that are just bigger than me, and they would like turn, and they're just like. <laughs> so it was so fascinating. I had such a fun time with it. And none of them, okay, a couple got aggressive. <laughs> Oh, the big thing about wildcats, if you ever, 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 ever go to a zoo and pho uh, photograph wildcats, um, they're at the top of the food chain for a reason. They don't want to eat you, they want to lift their leg and spray you. <laughs> so, so I learned a fascinating new um, photographic uh, photography skill 
which is take the picture and run. Because <laughs> they sprayed every time. So they would, as soon as you think they're being sweet, and they come over and they're like, they would rub along the, um, the little fence, like, aren't I a beautiful cat? Don't you want to touch me? And as soon as they drew you into, you are so pretty. Boom. And actually, the, there, were, there were five photographers that were allowed to go uh, this close. It was kind of a big deal. And uh, all four other ones got sprayed. <laughs> Not me. And let me tell you how that is. It's, oh my goodness. So horrifying. That's probably my cue. So does anyone, any final questions? Because I know we're right at the end. So does anyone have any like last minute questions? You guys are good? What do you do for the moment, anyway? What do I do for a living? Uh, I'm a voice actor. Yeah, I mean, what, do you, what kind of voice actor do you do? Well, I, uh, I do anime. I'm actually known in the States. I do a lot of commercial work. So I do a lot of radio and TV commercials. I do a lot of narrations. A lot of, like, you hear me online, audiobook type stuff. So, and I do anime. I have a couple of new shows that are going to be coming out. What are the new shows? What are the uh, Not allowed to say new shows. Yeah. Um, there's a children's magazine I don't think anyone here we already talked about called Highlights Magazine. Nobody knows? Okay. Nothing I think that anyone here. Do you guys you guys have a show called Rags? No, that sounds weird. Children's show? Okay. It's not on the side of Australia. Yeah. I do have one question. I came to the panel a bit late, but it's also a fair bit of an observation. You said that when you were studying photography, that your instructor was telling you about all the different conventions of uh The rules. Practices. Yeah. Well, the thing is that rules tend to be a little bit more of a guideline. With artistry, it's always your own interpretation. But the interesting thing I found about most of your photos is you still follow them. I do! Uh, here you go. Oh, that is, you are so exactly spot on. Uh, uh, the rule of thirds is my favorite. No, I'm not leading lines in framing. Yeah, and in, in, in general framing, and I do. There's, uh, I do think that those rules are there for a reason. I don't think that you have a bad photograph when you ignore the rules. Uh, I've seen beautiful photographs that they didn't follow a single rule. I, I think that it's just the way I shoot, is that I do. I find things more, I find it interesting to put the subject to the side of the picture. I think it, angles are interesting. I love light. I love light to come through. Um, my faces, I always expose a picture for the face. That's another rule. Always make sure the face is uh, what, what matters in a photo. And if that means you lose the background, then you lose the background. How many times have you seen a picture of somebody like, take a picture of me in front of the Indian Ocean. I'll never be back here again. And you see the ocean, and then you see a silhouette. <laughs> <laughs> that's awful. Uh, always, always get that face in there, because that, you know, that's what matters. The fact that the ocean is there, it's still there. Then go back and take a picture of the ocean. And if you know Photoshop, go put the person exposed on the ocean. It's amazing. Uh, you can actually combine them. Uh, yes, I am. For somebody who says, don't do this, I do it all. <laughs> Don't follow me, just, you know, show up and say hello. Uh, yeah, so funny. Any other, any other last minute questions? Uh, you guys are great. Uh, you're, by the way, I just want to say, and this is my last panel here in Australia. Um, first of all, thank you. I've never gotten to talk about photography in front of people, and it's something that is near and dear to my heart, so thank you very much. Uh, you guys are some of the nicest, seriously. I'm fascinated with how nice everybody in Australia is. I'm going to the other side of Australia in a few days, so maybe they're not so nice there. Um, <laughs> everybody in Perth is amazing. What are you doing on the other side? It's not a problem. Vacationing. I'm going to go. What do, what do you all call vacations? Do you say vacation? Holidays. Holidays. Holiday. I'm holidaying. What's uh, Just to go to Sydney. Because, <laughs> oh, you can't come to Australia and not go to Sydney. It's like going that's, to Texas and or going to America and not going to New York. Um, it's what, you know, everybody hears about. So. Yes, I will be capturing lots of images. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm Kara's Voice. Uh, if you want to follow me on Facebook, I'm Kara Edwards. And I have two Facebook pages. One of them is devoted solely to voiceover. One of them is my personal page, and I friend everybody, so it doesn't matter. Um, but that's where I put most of my photography. You can find me on Flickr, Kara Edwards VO. VO stands for voiceover. People always think I'm saying Kara Edwards VO, and no, I'm not talking about body odor. Um, it's voiceover. Uh, Flickr, Instagram. I'm not on camera plus, but I post pictures 
every day. I love pictures. I love looking at other people's pictures. I love celebrating images. I love art. I love all of those things. So uh, you can definitely find me. I hope you like dogs. Because <laughs> that's all I, I'm kind of obsessed with my dog. Um, yeah. So guys, thank you.